found in the New Orleans blues. I ain't a very good New Orleans blues piano player, but I can sing it just about. So let me break this down for you. Let me give you the chords. There are three chords. Um, the best way to think of playing any song on the piano is to split the keyboard almost in half. So you have from here to here. That's where your right hand should be. Um, and from here on down, that's where the left hand should be. Um, obviously, if this was a classical lesson, We'd be very, very strict on fingering, and we would say, well, this thumb needs to be here, this finger needs to be here, that thumb needs to jump around. I'm not going to bother with any of that because uh, it's uh, common knowledge. Everybody's hand is slightly different, and what might be comfortable for you may be very uncomfortable for somebody else, um, which is why I leave the thumb and the small finger out of it because it's more comfortable for my hand to use three fingers. On the right hand. Now, does this limit my play? Yes, somewhat. But for vocal accompaniment, it's not such a big deal because you just 
basically keeping a rhythm and when it comes to the solo you just heard me pound it out there and that's how i would get away with that and it sounds fancier than it is when you team it up with the left hand left hand i can play the classical left hand but i don't because my fingers tend to trip over each other um i'll probably use my first and ring finger for the left hand, all depends where I am on the keyboard, what I'm playing um, at, at any one time, but it's usually three, sometimes four fingers. Again, the thumb and the small finger don't really play a part. For more tuneful pieces, I will sit a lot closer to the piano um, so that I can use all five fingers. But I like to sit slightly further away and use this hand shape um, for vocal songs because it's more comfortable. So, our left hand should be on the C here, on the bass section, on this bass C. The right hand should form a C chord because the song is in the key of C. And um, the song, on and found the line, you use your sustain pedal if you want, just for this first section to drag it out. But remember to release the pedal on each chord change. Morning from a lion on the floor in New Orleans or Narlands, if you will. Now, when you make your C chord, it's very easy to jump to the F if you're using my fingering, which is first finger on the C, second finger on the E, ring finger on the G. Because all you literally have to do is move your second and ring finger across one key and you're on your F chord um, and that just makes life a lot easier for you so okay C chord morning from a lion on the floor in New Orleans now for the G chord uh, again we're moving these two fingers across one key this time we take the first finger with it uh, with with the two other fingers and that will move across one key to the D note Looking like the patches on a G note was about. Then we move all the fingers down one key and we get to the word about. Or about, actually. So, yeah. Looking like the patches was about. You change chord on about back to the F chord. And then move back down to the C bass and move all, uh, not all the fingers, sorry, the second, second and ring finger back to root position. My jeans. And that sequence repeats on the next set of words. Feeling like my belly was a warehouse full of blues. And I so miss my sweet cocaine Carolina. Now if you want to keep it simple, you don't have to do anything on uh, this last chord. But if you want to jazz it up, you feel confident enough, take the small finger and as the C chord rings, do a little break there. So what I'm doing there is, so I'm making it an even fuller C chord by bringing in the small finger on the next C. The sustain pedal is down, so all the notes are ringing. And then what I'll do is I'll bring it up the second finger onto the E flat note. I'll do that again, I'm sorry. Um, so, so full C, bring the small finger onto the B flat, G, E, E flat, C, all with the sustain pedal down. So let's do that again, shall we? And it's even better with the C bass added. <laughs> Jazz go there. Because the whole thing just rings and it sounds great. And then you do a bass walk from the C and uh, bring your hand into the F chord position, the right hand. Now what I'm doing here is a bass and... Um, I've forgotten the name of this. Uh, basically a bass rhythm with the left hand. So uh, it's, it's not a counter bass um, because that would be... It's a fifth down, I think. So it's F, C, F, C on 
a four count rhythm. So all quarter notes. And it go, um, the bass is playing quarter notes. Three, four, one, two, three, four. The right hand is playing the eighth notes. One, two, three, four is the way to look at it. So your right hand is playing chords on the end. change chords we're back to that c chord and the bass has to change as well so move the left hand and use the second finger to play the g note the cooking carolina now this is a clever little trick we're going to use a diff different g chord and uh, the first finger is going to move to the d bass and the second finger stays on g now this new g chord we're basically taking this whole c chord and we're moving it completely around the place. Um, the first finger drops to a B note, second finger to a D, and the third finger, or the ring finger, if you will, to the G. And we'll walk up the bass back to the C chord, not to a jazz chord. Cheeky with the rhythm there. I keep hearing that F chord. I do apologize. Uh, you can change the rhythm here as we go back to our original chord. And a good way to do it, which I've literally just discovered, is just jump the first and second finger across one key. That's the way to look at it, rather than moving the whole wrist and hand. go through repeating these sequences and you get more confident you can do chord walks as well as bass walks so walk your chord with your bass note so c d e f and back down again f e d c um, or even all the way up e d e, f g but again different inversion of the g chord because we're up here maybe even bringing the small finger for a seventh Sounds really good. And then for your break. Keep it simple to start with. And then as you get more confident, bring in the small finger, let it tap the A note. Remember, if you start feeling out of your depth, just stop, just walk away and come back to it again um, because if you keep trying to plow through the thing will just get frustrating it will get confusing and before you know it you'll have lost all the confidence and you'll have forgotten where you are in the song so go back listen to all the words you've got all the chord shapes now uh, i think in fact let's just go through that chorus again to make sure so change it up so instead of just playing one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, as you get to the chord changes and the bass walks just before it you can go one and two and two and two for one and two three four and one two and three four and one two and three four and one. so uh, it's uh, one and two and three four becomes one two and three four and one two and three four and one. so the, the right hand almost takes over well, that's my first piano lesson. I can't deny that was probably one of the most terrifying experiences I've had in a long time. I've only been playing piano through uh, about two or three years now. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. I hope you got something out of this lesson. Um, very simplistic way to play. Uh, there are piano players here on the net that can play this song a lot better. But if you've got something out of it, that's all we care about. So thanks for watching. Cheers. Stop recording video.